Tonight, the family of a college student missing since 2004 is hoping a long overdue move by investigators could finally uncover what happened to Maura Murray. Here is what we know right now. Murray was a star cross-country runner in high school, one of the top two mile runners in the state of Massachusetts. She disappeared in 2004 and has not been seen or heard from since. Her case made international headlines at the time and her family has tried to keep attention on her case. Her sister, Julie, is going to be joining us live in just a moment. But first, we want to take you back to that New Hampshire rural road in 2004, a car crash and a confusing scene that remains a mystery to this day. 21-year-old Maura Murray was a nursing student at UMass Amherst when she disappeared in 2004, minutes after crashing her car on a rural road in New Hampshire. Her disappearance just days after the launch of Facebook. The case has been labeled the first crime mystery of the social media age. It's sort of two mysteries. It's, it's why was she going to New Hampshire and what happened to her, combined with the fact that there's really not a lot of clues. Erin Larkin hosts a podcast about the case. She and Mora were on the UMass track team when Mora suddenly left campus. She told her professors that there was a family emergency or death in the family and she was going to be away for a few days. And then she got in her car and drove to an ATM off campus and withdrew $280 and then stopped at a liquor store and bought about $40 worth of alcohol. But there was no death in the family, her parents not knowing anything about her plans. As she headed north on a country road around 7.30 on a Monday night, she lost control on a sharp turn, the car going off the road into a tree. 911 transcripts show a call from a man driving by minutes later. He said she was shaken up and the airbags had deployed with heavy damage, but Mora refused help. By the time an officer arrived, the car was locked and there was no sign of Mora. I think the most likely thing is that she was picked up by a local who offered her help, perhaps at first, but then something something bad happened, and that person is most likely responsible for her disappearance. After 18 years of searches and candlelight vigils, still no solid leads or answers in the case. Bones discovered last summer turned out not to be Mora's. Now, with Mora's profile finally entered into the FBI database, hope that somewhere, something will turn up. My hope is that there's a hit somewhere uh, in, in the country, um, some unidentified person, you know, they, they put in the DNA and they can make, make that connection. That would be the best case scenario. And hopefully someone out there watching can help. Julie Murray is Maura's sister and she is joining us live tonight to talk about the latest in the case. Uh, Julie, thank you for being with us. Oh, thanks for having me. Uh, Maura's profile now entered, as we just heard, into the FBI database. Why now, all these years later? Well, I, I hope it's because there's some new information, um, but I, I think it's because law enforcement has exhausted all the resources that they have available, and this is a very powerful database that they can use to track and correlate information. Do they believe that a crime was committed? Um, the short answer is I don't know. Um, law enforcement doesn't share very much, um, and they haven't indicated uh, that there was a crime, so I'm not sure. Okay. I want to go back to that night, February 9th, 2004. Really, it was kind of events over the course of a day. Um, why would your sister say that there was a death in the family and that wasn't true? Right. Well, I think that it was an excuse to buy some time. Uh, I think she used it as an excuse to get away from school. She was in the nursing program. She had clinicals. And I think she just wanted to get away and clear her head. And that was a, you know, a, a reasonable excuse where no one would ask her any further questions. Let's talk about some of the other details that have been shared over over the course of time about that night. She withdrew money from her account. Uh, most of what she had at that time, she had purchased some alcohol. She had packed a bag uh, indicating that she was going to be gone for a while, as you said. Did she share anything about how she was doing, her state of mind before that day with you or anyone else? You know, I talked to Mara the Saturday before she disappeared, uh, Saturday afternoon, and she, everything seemed fine. She was car shopping with my dad. Her car was uh, not running well. Um, but when we spoke that Saturday, she didn't have 
she didn't mention anything. Um, she seemed fine. We were just making fun of my dad mostly. Mm -hmm. Do you have any theories about, about where your sister is and what may have happened? I'm sure you replay the events of that day and what you know through your mind constantly. Yeah, well, it's hard to say. I don't know for sure, um, but I do believe that she was going up there to clear her head, um, and I believe that she was met with foul play. Why do you believe that? Just because it was out of character for Mara to just take off and leave everything. Um, also, the things that she took with her. So she took textbooks, she took running gear, uh, she took birth control, she took accident forms, um, and to me, it indicated that she planned to return. Mm. There was one thing that stuck out to me as I was reading a lot about this case um, and the search immediately afterwards. It, it seemed as though the search was focused on one area. I believe it was west of where her car was found. Uh, but there was concern raised that there wasn't more of a search to the east of that location. Tell me about that search. Tell me about subsequent searches uh, in the years following. Right, so the immediate search took place right around the, the area where the vehicle was found, and it didn't seem that anyone went east uh, towards Lincoln, New Hampshire, where we think she was headed uh, towards um, the Bartlett area uh, because she called a condo um, that my family had stayed at before in Bartlett. Um, but my dad showed up Wednesday morning and he uh, met with law enforcement, and you know, he was expecting more of a uh, all hands on deck uh, search effort, but it, it was essentially him and a, a few of the local law enforcement who were the search, essentially. I um, of course, go ahead. Uh, of course, there were additional um, searches that happened uh, later on in the week, and of course, you know, every every year since. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine being in your shoes and having someone that I love and care about just vanish. Um, it's been almost two decades, as we said. How is your family doing? How are you holding up through all of this? And, and how do you process um, the fact that you just don't have a lot of answers? Yeah, it, it's been very difficult, but it definitely has brought my family closer together. Um, we have each other's back. And, you know, what we do is we try not to dwell on what we don't know. We try to focus on what we can do and where we can make, um, where we can influence the case. Um, and that is by raising awareness and keep talking about Mara. Mm -hmm. Do you believe your sister's alive, Julie? I hope she is, but everything in my gut says that she's not. What's your message to the public as we share her face and her story with people tonight? What do you want people to do if they can help? I just want people to continue to talk about her. Um, missing person cases like this um, often go cold. And um, my biggest fear is that my sister will become a folder on a shelf. Um, and I cannot let that happen. And so the more awareness that we bring, the more we talk about it, um, and the more we can, you know, try to find that missing puzzle piece to get us some answers, get Mara some answers, um, that's our mission. A case never goes cold for the family who, who wants the answers that you seek. Uh, Julie, we appreciate you coming on tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much. My best to you and your family. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.